I recently discussed a book called The Child in the Photo by Kerry Wilkinson. And in that discussion, I said that at the end of the ebook, there was a link to another of Wilkinson's books called The Girl Who Came Back. And I said, I promised myself I wouldn't read it straight away. I gave in. I, I downloaded it that very night and read it within, I think, two days, two and a bit days. It's even better than The Child in the Photo. And this may be one of the best books I've read this year because it was so unpredictable and really very well developed, both in terms of the narrative and the characters. I absolutely adored it. So I'll talk a little bit about the narrative, but I'm not going to go into any detail of any length because this is full of suspense. It's full of surprise. Definitely just expect the unexpected. So this was released in 2017. And the tagline for this is 13 years ago, Olivia Adams went missing. Now she's back, dot, 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 or is she? I have a huge guilty pleasure for books based on child abductions. So this is something that really eats into my heart. I really love this. And Olivia was abducted when she was six. Now she's come back to Stone Ridge 13 years later. And, you know, she goes to, to her mother and says, you know, hey, I'm back. And as the tagline suggests, there are people who are going to question her identity and she spends some of the time trying to prove who she is, but also she's not willing to, um, you know, she's not going to take any rubbish from anybody. She knows who she is, but she doesn't divulge exactly what happened to her or what she can remember. And it's all about trying to work out who she is and if it's her and how is she going to prove it? Does she need to prove it? Does anybody doubt her? Does her mother doubt her? It doesn't seem like her mother doubts her. You'd think her mother would know. And I trust her mother. But I'm not going to say which direction this takes. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think Olivia as a character is very likeable. I think she's... I was going to say she's got a lot of guts. But I don't... Maybe that's not quite what I mean. I think... She knows how to stand up for herself. She's obviously been through a lot. But at the same time, she's got that element of vulnerability about her and it makes her react to situations differently depending on whether she's on her own or she's with um, new friends. I think bringing in the characters of Natalie and Reese was a brilliant idea. They work so well with this. The fact that Natalie's not necessarily a stranger, somebody from Olivia's childhood, but also they don't really know each other, so there's still a lot of getting used to each other. That was a really great way for us to get to know Olivia as a person. And also, obviously, with the, the conversations through her mother and things. There is most of this, you know, our, our narrator is Olivia, but occasionally we have a different narrator. I don't want to say too much about that at this moment but if once you read it you'll know exactly um, what I mean and I will say that I think it became pretty obvious that that what that was who that was I think that became very obvious early on but it also throws up a red herring or it makes you question whether or not it's a red herring because I firmly believed one thing about Olivia but this second narrator made me think well actually that's what happened or that's who that is and for the entire thing, I was confused because I believed that Olivia was Olivia. And I believed that she wasn't at the same time. I, I had no idea where this was going. And that's brilliant. And it's so effective and so powerful. And right, you know, there's, there's a twist nearish the end. Of course there is. And... I thought, right, that's brilliant. I absolutely love that. And then, like, a few pages later, there's another twist. It's so unexpected, and it's just from start to finish, absolutely hooked. The narrative was so incredibly well-developed, and the execution of the narrative, I thought, was pretty flawless. The characters, even a lot of the minor characters, had really good backstories. There's a little bit about Reese's sexuality that's mentioned that's, you know, completely irrelevant to the plot, but gives the character that a little bit more dimension and that's the same for basically everybody who's mentioned and the way the past is reconstructed now that Olivia has returned is brilliant you know we get to learn as readers what happened how it affected people 
and we're not just told it. It's not just an information dump. It's fed, you know, very delicately throughout the novel. The rate of reveal for information is perfect. I absolutely love it. I think it is probably my favourite novel that I've read this year. It's July, we're halfway through the year. That could change, but I'm, I'm, you know, I finished this last night. Tonight I'm going to start another Kerry Wilkinson. I kind of, I'm a bit addicted. But so far, out of the two I've read, The Child in the Photo and The Girl Who Came Back, both are really good. But The Girl Who Came Back is just, from a technical perspective, you know, if I'm judging this as a writer, it's fantastic. It really is brilliant. I think there was maybe a semicolon that was used incorrectly. But other than that, grammatically sound, the structure is brilliant, the pacing fabulous. From a reading perspective, in terms of being excited by it and addicted and really you know, gripped into this, it's perfect. So from both angles, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Definitely read it if it sounds like your kind of thing. I promise you will love it.